so delighted to welcome you here today to our 2015 Founders Day event. This event is of course always a very special event and a very important event because it celebrates the role of retired members in the founding and the building of this very great local. Now, Today's program is called Celebrating Local 237 and Our Members' Extraordinary Lives. And the focus of today's program is on our oral history project. The history of the union resides with everyone in this room. The history of the union is in the heads and the hearts of Local 237 members. I am proud to be a Teamster, and also I'm uh, proud to be a member of Local 237 for the past 43 years. <laughs> I started with the Housing Authority as a maintenance man trainee, and I retired as a resident building superintendent 19 years ago. I did not meet Rocco until we both retired. We're both active with the retiree division, and we work very close together for the Italian Heritage Festival for the past six years. Rocco is motivated, committed, and uh, he, he, is, uh, he has a lot to tell you, so I'll let him tell you himself. I was born in Italy. I came in the United States in 1955. And my first job, soon after I arrived here, was working with the ILGWU, International Ladies Garment Worker Union. In 1991, with the help of the union, Local 237, they had a class for maintenance worker. So I took that class. It was so much valuable, because when I took the test for maintenance worker, I did very good on the test. So I was on the list. All kinds of agency, sanitation, uh, they called me for interview, you know? and they assigned me with uh, commission suites, uh, third floor on 125 Ward Street. My job was, actually, I was the first one and opened the door and prepared the office, the commissioners and uh, the assistant commissions, uh, deputy commissions, that the uh, place was ready to work. I worked with the health department as maintenance work because every agency, need, they needed, every agency I think needs maintenance workers, custodial, motor vehicle operators, they need to function. So I stayed there until 2002. That's when I retired. When I joined the retiree division, local 237, I joined my second family, because the first family, the big family at the union. I'm proud of my union, because we are together. When I look at the emblem or the mud, the two horses over there, I always think one horse is the union and one horse is the members. And we pull together. 
there someone here who worked in the city of New York during the, the heyday of the HIV uh, AIDS epidemic? And her title was Public Health Educator. So these people gave out information. They counseled uh, people who had, uh, were exposed to the problems. And uh, a, a, a great deal of their work had to do with prevention. OK? And uh, so I'd like to introduce to you Olga Perez Basaggio. Um, I came uh, to this country 48 years ago, <laughs> unbelievable, in 1967. Um, I already, uh, from my, in my country, I have already a background of teaching and social work. I was urged by a, a co-worker, former co-worker that knew about my qualifications. She saw an ad in the paper. And she said, that, that job had your name on. Uh, so I managed to, I applied. I was interviewed, and I secured a job. And for me, it was the satisfaction of giving back from all, the, all I could contribute to the community, all could I contribute, contribute to my patients, who were mostly Latino, Hispanic women, just like me, with different backgrounds from different areas. And some of them, uh, it was the first time that they have access to, or to really health care. And then, as uh, Mr. George mentioned, it was at the, hay, at the height of the uh, AIDS, uh, HIV infection, and all what was going on, and all the misconceptions. So my job was, in, in, in their own language, to explain, to demystify the horrors of whatever the word, the connotation of the word, and uh, for them to have informed consent to be tested. Most of them, they were pregnant women. And at that point, we were not only protecting her, or protecting the patient, the family, and the baby that was coming, because there were already mechanisms in place for that baby to probably be free of the virus in case of the mother was infected. So it was a very key uh, job, a key, a key situation. I was part of a, a wonderful team. And the job was, it became my dream job. And it was also my dream job because it was a union job. After retiring, my involvement with the union then increased because then now I have all this time. And uh, in the beginning, what I did was uh, register for Tai Chi. Uh, I took the theater classes. Some of the faces, they remember me. Uh, then I took photography. Most recently, salsa, and I have to tell you, I got for one first class, a first prize, first place at what our version of Dancing with the Stars, local 237. <laughs> I, I, was, I was bringing my medal, but I couldn't find it. Um, I think I could be a poster child for, I retired from the job, but not from the union. <laughs> In 1981, this man, came to work as a school safety agent level one for the Department of Board of Education. For his knowledge, loyalty, he was promoted to school safety agent level three. After 31 years on the job, he retired to travel and spend more time with his family. And now he also helped Tinster Local 237 Retiree Division Committee with his knowledge, ideas, and contribution. It's an honor for me to introduce for you Mr. Leroy Mia. I was born in Panama. I'm 70 years old. I joined the union. And you know, when you finish the training, they're going to start distributing the officers to different schools. I volunteer, they asked for volunteers, and I put up my hands, and they said, well, you are volunteering for Thomas Jefferson High School. I said, great. I went, 
it wasn't easy. But by the grace of God, I survived, and I appreciate it. I loved it. I enjoyed my work. I was never in the service, but I categorized my job as a military person. <laughs> it's either you're going to do the right thing, or you're not going to do it at all. When you look at me, I am always present in my job and encouraging, saluting everyone, even if they don't answer. But it was good to me. I continued working, and I, got, I was promoted to group leader. I continued doing, continued doing my job. In 1990, came the merge. We was part of New York City Police Department. So better recognition, the kids they were not calling us no more toy cops. They wasn't calling us any names anymore. We were more respectable and everyone looked up for us. I continue working. I retired 2006 with 31 years of service. <laughs> Retire from work, but not from the union. My name's Jack Jolly and I'm a retired manager. And uh, I would introduce you to Ed Kane. On August 31st, 1975, we both started working for the Housing Authority on the same day. Both of us never spent a day out of the union all these years. And um, so I'd like to announce uh, Ed Kane. The day they hired us was the week before Labor Day. They made us fill out a leave of absence so they didn't have to pay us for Labor Day. <laughs> As a housing assistant, uh, I went out there at Grant Houses and I was intimidated by the size of the place. It's 2,000 apartments, it's massive buildings, 20-story buildings, some of them are attached and they're curved and you're really intimidated by this place. So here I am on 125th Street, staring at these buildings and thinking, I don't know if I want to do this or not. And I was told I had to come out and collect rent and everything, and I said, I really don't know if this is my job. <laughs> and when I met Mr. Musio, he said to me, oh, are you the guy they sent to replace the guy that never returned? <laughs> the union was there for us. Uh, we fought with the union at times to get what we needed. Uh, there was never any, any, kind of a, uh, any kind of a backlash by the union. Uh, they worked with us. They knew what we wanted. They showed us how to go about getting it. They lectured us. They taught us. They, they taught us how to organize, how to organize our people, how to use the networks that we had at the time. And we, we, we built a better union, I believe, uh, from, the, you know, from the chapters. Um, and it was very instrumental in helping us succeed. Before I got here, I was too shy to take a job as a, a salesman. I said, I can't sell anything to anybody, I'm too shy. Now I think I might be able to sell you to Brooklyn Bridge. And it's been a, it's been a great, great run. And Jack, thank you. I'm so delighted to have Joshua Freeman, who is a distinguished professor of history at Queens College and the Joseph S. Murphy Institute of the City University of New York. Uh, this is a day to celebrate your contributions to the union, to the city of New York, but I think it's also a day to celebrate this project that Nancy uh, was talking about, the oral history project that Local 237 launched that is extremely unusual, actually, and I think something that's really worth celebrating uh, and, and getting the word out about. Uh, as Nancy mentioned, I was kind of lucky to be involved from the beginning. And when I spoke in 1998 at Founders Day, I said how important I thought the project was. Well, I think today this project is actually more important than it was in 1998. And I think the reason for that is that, as many of you know, public employees have come under a fierce attack over the uh, you know, decade and a half since this project started. You know, and, and I'm sure you've all seen this, you know, public employees are portrayed as being overpaid, overprotected, 
lazy, inefficient, you know, selfish. Uh, the unions are portrayed as being some sort of special interest. And in states that were once strongholds of unionism, places like Wisconsin and Michigan in recent years, there have been laws that have uh, denied the right to bargain over uh, salaries, they've taken away the agency shop, uh, and right now there's a court case working up to the Supreme Court that's challenging the right to have the agency shop any place in the country, including here in New York. So I think we are at a moment when it's more important than ever before to get out the real story of what public employees do, who you folks are, what your unions are all about. You know, without unions like Local 237 and the other public employee unions, New York City would be a completely different place today and a much worse place. And, you know, a much worse place. We're going to have an opportunity for members to share their thoughts on the history of the union. Local 237 has been my representative since 1975. I just recently retired uh, in 2012. I had almost 40 years with the city. So I want to thank the union because they represented us all the time. They were always all out for us. They did everything they could. They were really on top of everything, okay? I want to remind you, everybody out here in the audience, we're the union, okay? These are our representatives, but I want to speak up for them right. because they're really on the job they're taking care of business, okay? But we have to support them also. Uh, like uh, every sister and brothers, I have been served this union as a public servant. We call civil service. Uh, had uh, uh, happily finished my tour for 27 years in New York City. Today, I enjoy such a wonderful life because all come from everybody from our city member, our sister brother, all the, the uh, union officials, they really did a great job. The union has been so good to us, you know. I've been on the job for 20, almost 30 years, and uh, I've been retired for 12 years. And um, I'm a father of six, a grandfather of 11, a great-grandfather of four. And, uh, and uh, without the union, Without the union, uh, I wouldn't have uh, put my kids to college, and uh, they're still helping me now, and uh, I'm so proud of the union. I was brought up in a home that was totally committed to unions. My dad, who was born in 07, was the first in his family to become, you know, to go to college, and he became a lawyer. And my dad started working for the union and he loved it so much. And he was so proud of the work that the union did. He always told me, in union there is strength. In union there is strength. And that's how I was brought up, always to respect the union. I worked for the union for 28 years. I've been retired now 14 years. Uh, I had a kidney transplant. And back in 2001, and the union was 110% there for me. Excuse me for crying so much, but I'm very happy that I was a member of the workforce. I am not now, but uh, the union, Ms. Nancy True, Mr. Feinstein, so many, Mr. Rodriguez gave me a chance. I was a heating plant technician, a boiler man. <laughs> and uh, it was the greatest years of my life. So would everyone stand, please, while Ken Fox leads us in the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight light gleaming. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I'm not going to introduce him because I don't think he needs any introduction. He's our friend. He's the controller. He sends out the pension checks. Yeah. Our controller, Scott Stringer. So that's it, huh? <laughs> but I wanted to come stop by today. One, this is not my first time at this great lunch. It's a celebration of the people who built this city who were there during the 70s when the city was on the edge of bankruptcy and you made sure that this city survived and you are a strong, proud union and I am proud to serve as your controller. I also want to thank you. You know, the road to being controller was very tough and without your support, we would never have gotten there. So I know from where I come. And I also want to just recognize Nancy True the directors of the director of the retirees division and Pat Stryker, let's give them a big round of applause. Pat and I work every day on the pension. And I also want to acknowledge somebody that I think the city has to say thank you to a lot more. Your union leader is such an incredible advocate for every member of this union. He knows where every one of the members are, the agencies. He cares about NYCHA. He cares about each and every one of you. And when he calls me, he does it in three minutes. This is what the union needs. This is what you have to look at. Goodbye. And I go to work because I don't want the second call to come in, you know? There are mayors who don't want that second call to come in, right? But please. Give a big round of applause to a great union leader, my friend, Greg Floyd. I look in the audience and I look at our distinguished guest and Congressman Charlie Rangel, and I am reminded that you can't really be progressive unless you know and respect the past. Everyone here represents a history worth knowing, and you possess a history filled with important lessons. Local 237 is built upon rich past and is destined to be a bright future. You know a union is about the people coming together for a common cause. It's about many individuals acting as one, with many stories and one big one. So on behalf of all our members and the executive board, I thank you for your dedication in helping Local 237 become the gold standard and a strong, dynamic union as it continues to be. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, when I stand here, I just returned from Washington. And coming back home is like coming to getting your battery recharged. It's something like reminding you what it's all about. And since most of you are retirees, and I hope to be joining you in a couple of years, <laughs> I'm here really to get my feet wet and see what life is outside of the hum and the drum of what I have been doing. But I just want you to know that you have been the wind under my wings. And that the retirees to me are the people that have fought the good fight and entitled to relax knowing that their government is going to be there for whatever their needs have been or are today because you deserve it. God has blessed those people who have retired to have them as the strongest political weapon that we have in the United States of America. People who have been through hard times. Nothing has been given to you. You fought each and every step forward. And you understand what registration is all about. 
You understand what voting is all about. And God knows as long as we have people who remember when we had the dreams, when we had the aspirations, we had to drive, it means that we're not gonna give out. We're not gonna give